So yeah, those are my big updates, everybody. <laughs> Released a special. I had gay sex with a witch. <sighs> Fell in love. Too fat for a horse. <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of years. I guess my other news is that last year I wrote and released a book. Anybody get my book? <laughs> <laughs> Two claps. Okay, you guys are people, you're, you're obsessed with me, okay? You've, there's a parasocial relationship forming here. And we need some space. Do you have the front? Was it you, sir? You, you got my, oh, thanks. Did you like the book? Great. You got it on Kindle and paperback. That's odd. Because I gave you the paperback. Oh, and then you went and bought it on Kindle. You're already on Kindle. Oh, right. And then I... Yes. 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 Like now. <laughs> yeah, right. And I gave it to you for free. God, I'm a legend. <laughs> Just like we rehearsed. Well done, mate. <laughs> You've already seen the show. Yeah. All right, freaking me out a little bit now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> a funny old. Stop it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Nice to see you again. <laughs> man who I definitely remember. <laughs> well, if you haven't got the book, please do check it out, my friends. Uh, you might like it. It's called Spare. And... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't released under my name. I wrote it for a friend. No, the book is called I Millennial, One Snowflake Screed Against Boomers, Billionaires and Everything Else. It basically lays out how my generation, the millennials, have been comprehensively fucked over by neoliberal capitalism when it comes to work, housing, privatisation, education, wealth and equality, the climate crisis. It explains how this class society we have has hollowed us out, is killing us all, and our only hope of a better, more democratic future is a left-wing populist revolution to bring about something akin to democratic socialism. Yeah, it's had a pretty big impact. Have you guys been enjoying all the socialism lately? You're welcome. That's the Ballard Bump, baby! This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, the book did nothing. It didn't end capitalism or make me any money. And it's fucking bleak, man. I don't know. I don't know about you. To me, last year was like really fucking, <laughs> really grim. Last year, I was like, I, I think we're actually going backwards now as a species. We're actually devolving. <laughs> back at war with Russia, Taliban are back in charge, the US and the West backing in, war crimes in the Middle East, we're winding back abortion rights. The new Samsung Galaxy is a fucking flip phone. <laughs> and Channel 7 is doing Australian Idol. What the fuck is going on? We're Benjamin buttoning our way towards the apocalypse. <laughs> By the time it arrives, we'll have devolved into little babies wearing Vote for Pedro t-shirts. <laughs> just shitting into our nappies and listening to Crazy Frog. Just... <laughs> we're going backwards. And we're all becoming obsolete, right? I'm sure the big story of the past year, everything going to be outsourced to artificial intelligence. Absolutely everything outsourced to AI. Everything. I didn't write any of these jokes, guys. <laughs> This is all ChatGPT. <laughs> anyway, what's the deal with kill all humans? <laughs> all right, that deserved more, to be honest. I did it when ChatGPT came out like every other comedian. I asked him to write me a few jokes for the show. It did not work out well. I think we have very different ideas about what constitutes satire, me and ChatGPT. Throughout some current events, See what it came up with, all right? It said, hey, Elon Musk, that guy's in the news all the time. Hey, ChatGPT, write me a joke about Elon Musk. This is what it gave me. Why did Elon Musk invent the electric car? To save the environment and to power his army of robots with renewable energy. <laughs> Fucking got him. <laughs> Roasted! You want some aloe vera after that sick bird, Elon? Woo! Dog shit. <laughs> Thought I'd try geopolitics, rising tensions with China. That's a very big story. I said, hey, ChatGBT, write me a joke about China. Okay? 
That's what it gave me. Why did the Chinese man wear a red string around his wrist? So he could find his way back to his noodle shop. <laughs> yeah, not cool, bro. All right, that's definitely racist. But I'm not sure why. It sounds like it was written by a guy who wants to be racist about Chinese people, but has none of the details. <laughs> yeah, bloody Chinese with their fucking red string in their shops, it's a disgrace! Why can they all get back in their hot air balloons and fuck off back to Antarctica? I've done no research! Generally gave me that joke, and then just a second later, this paragraph appeared underneath it. It said, it's important to note that making a joke about an entire country can be considered offensive. <laughs> it's important to avoid telling jokes which demean a group of people based on their race, ethnicity, or culture. You just did the noodle shop joke, it's there! <laughs> it's like in the two seconds between paragraphs, the chatbot was sent on a sensitivity training course. <laughs> reflected on its past material, held itself accountable, and pledged to do better in the future. Which is crazy. It means that this chatbot is more emotionally advanced than Ricky Gervais. Isn't that a great... Oh! Boom! I'm not going anywhere, you fucking robot! Yeah, Ricky Gervais. Where's that cunt now, eh? During the world playing the stadium's Netflix special? What a piece of shit. He's not on the corner recording a special for YouTube! Yeah! <laughs> I win. The most offensive response I got was this. I said, hey, ChatGPT, write me a joke about Tom Ballard. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know who Tom Ballard is. <laughs> <laughs> not even the fucking robots have Paramount Plaza.